So when you first meet sine and cosine's hand, you usually uh, do things a bit like this. So uh, you've got a right angle triangle, um, the angle you're looking at, the adjacent is the uh, one next to it that's not the hypotenuse, the hypotenuse is the longest side, and the opposite is the one that's really sort of opposite it, this one doesn't sort of uh, touch the angle at all. Um, if theta was here, the opposite and the adjacent would be reversed, and we've got the formulae sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse, cos theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan theta is opposite over adjacent. Sometimes people remember that as uh, Socatoa. I like to write it out like that just to remember what the formulae uh, comes from that low, so sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And uh, we turn out like that. Um, and that's fine. Uh, and that works great so long as um, the angle theta is between 0 and 90 degrees, because otherwise we can't, uh, we can't make a triangle. Um, but uh, if you, you know, take your calculator and do something like sine of 124 uh, degrees, it still uh, gives you a, a value, but that doesn't correspond to any uh, any right angle triangle. We can't have a, uh, a triangle that has an angle of 90 and an angle of 124. So where do these um, other values uh, come from? Well, uh, if we look at the uh, unit circle here, and by the unit circle I just mean a circle that has radius uh, one unit, so uh, all of these uh, coordinates here are, are one or minus one, so we've got minus one here and here and one uh, here and here. Uh, let's say I look at about an angle of 45 degrees, and I'm going to measure my angles from this line here going upwards, so 45 degrees is going to be uh, in here somewhere, and I'll get a nice right angle triangle uh, in there, and that angle 45 degrees. If you just look at that triangle uh, down here, well, it's a unit circle, so this radius is 1, so that length is 1. Uh, so in all of these formulae over here, we've got the hypotenuse is equal to 1. So that means that sine theta is just equal to the opposite side divided by 1, or the opposite side. So, uh, so this height here is sine theta, and similarly cos theta would be the adjacent side, divided by 1. So uh, this here would just be cos theta, or in fact in this particular example we, theta is uh, 45 degrees. So actually if I measure the height of the triangle that I produce here I can say that that's a uh, sine of 45 degrees. What I'm going to do is to try and draw a graph of all different values of sine going beyond 90 degrees using this idea. So here's 45 degrees and here's 45 degrees so the height is uh, is the value of sine at that point so that's uh, going to be a point on this graph which is going to be the graph of uh, y equals sine x and I could do that for uh, all sorts of other values as well if I get rid of this uh, triangle 45 degrees and put in a different one I could put in a I could try and do approximately 30 degrees uh, you might know that sine of 30 that is a half, and actually that one will end up in here at one half. I should say that this, of course, this is a one and minus one as well because uh, that's the corresponding heights on the unit circle. And I could go to all sorts of different uh, angles. Now, how does that help us go beyond uh, 90 degrees? Well, okay, everything between 0 and 90 in here is exactly as with these right angle triangles, and I could fill and I could fill those in. Um, up to 90 degrees. Now 90 degrees isn't on a right angle triangle, but here I can still define it, right? So if I say 30 degrees, 45, 60 degrees, say, uh, this is uh, 90 degrees, and I'm going to carry on defining sine theta to be just the, the y coordinate here, the height. So actually at 90 degrees we see that sine of theta is uh, 1, sine of 90 degrees is 1. And actually we could keep defining angles as we go around, so actually if I put another uh, angle in here, and let's say this is 45 degrees. So actually the angle I'm looking at here isn't just a value for 45 degrees, but it's going to be uh, 135 degrees, because I've got this right angle 90 plus 45 degrees. So actually over here at 135 degrees I'm going to plot sine theta to be uh, this uh, height here. Actually what you can see by the symmetry is that actually sine of a uh, 135 degrees is going to be exactly the same as uh, what sine of 45 degrees was. So actually, uh, there, there it is in there. And we're starting to build up a picture of, the, of this graph. Similarly, if I go down further, so actually I've got my so I've got a 30 degree angle in here. This would be 150 degrees, and that will be the same height as uh, sine 30 degrees, or 
or one or one half. As I keep going round, get round to 180 degrees, and actually now the y coordinate's back to zero. So there we go. Uh, put that one there, and we can actually keep going as far as we like. So I could go round to 225 degrees down here, 180 plus 45. And the difference here is actually it's going to be the same. It's going to be a congruent triangle to this one, but actually rather than being uh, positive up here, the, the y coordinate is going to be negative. So that height there, if I were to um, read it, uh, just read it across here, it'd have the same. It's going to have. It's going to be just as uh, same size, but negative instead. And so that'll be somewhere down here. We come around to 270 degrees, and sine is at minus one. Keep going around again. Value down here that's going to be the same as the one we worked out here at 225 degrees. And finally, we come back around to 360 when sine is uh, back to zero, which incidentally is is where it started. Um, sine of zero is zero. Um, we could, if we wanted to, even define values even further than that. So actually, rather than just having you know up to 360 degrees, okay, well, what would sine of 390 degrees uh, be? Well, you can easily uh, check by putting it into your uh, calculator that sine of 390 degrees. Uh, is one half. That's the same as uh, sine of 30, which is also uh, one half. Uh, so, um, and that's because actually here on the unit circle, we've got to get to 390 degrees. We've gone all the way around 360 degrees, and we've got another 30 degrees again. So we end up in the, in the same place. So these graphs are all going to cycle every 360 degrees. In fact, tan does so even more upon than that. But um, uh, and it's just going to keep repeating. And actually, if I fill in, if I uh, join up all the dots here, um, the graph of uh, y equals a sine x then uh, looks something uh, something like this. You can see exactly got the shape that we've uh, uh, described there, done a little bit more accurately on a computer, um, and that gives the graph of y equals sine x. And if I bring the graph up on the graphing software instead here, you can see. Uh, that shape and how it repeats. So it gets to 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270, 360, and then it just cycles and it keeps going on forever. Every time we go through a 360 degree cycle, we end up back where back where we started. And we can keep going on as much as I like in this direction. And of course, we could also go back in the other direction and start defining uh, start defining negative values in in the same way. Uh, so getting to minus 90 degrees means just going the other way uh, right around the circle. So sine of minus 90 degrees, rather than going this way and getting to 90, I come down this way, and we get to, to minus one. Sine of minus, uh, you know, 150, say, would be uh, come down here 90 degrees and another 60 degrees. It would be uh, this negative value uh, in here. And now we could do exactly the same thing for uh, cos. So again, uh, cos is uh, neatly defined between 0 and 90 by these triangles again, and uh, the cosine of the angle is just the adjacent side this time, so rather than the y coordinate, it's the x coordinate. If I look at 45 degrees, cos is going to be this distance here, so it's going to be cos of uh, 45. And by doing exactly the same sort of thing, going around and sweeping out these values, we can think about different values. So cos of 0 is 1, cos of 90 degrees is 0, x coordinates are 0, cos of 180 is minus 1. And actually, the graph of cos looks very similar to the graph of sine, it's just it starts a little bit further over. So actually, if I were to fold the page here at uh, 90 and say, well, actually, instead of 90, uh, that's uh, 0. Uh, and then, of course, all of these values change, so that becomes 90, 180, 270, 360, and so on. We get the graph of y equals uh, cos x. And much like the graph of sine x, that's going to cycle every 360 degrees uh, for exactly the same reason. And we can see that again back in the graphing software. So here we go, it starts at 1, goes down to 0 and 90, exactly as we described, and just cycles on indefinitely uh, in each direction. And the last one to think about then is, is tan uh, x. Um, and now tan is the opposite divided by the adjacent. And actually, we can see uh, here then on the unit circle that, for example, tan 45 is the opposite divided by the adjacent. That's sine 45 divided by cos 45. So we've got two ways to think about tan, really. It's either as the gradient of this line, it's the sort of how much y changes as x changes, 
this one divided by this one, or we can just think of it as uh, sine over cos. In effect, it's always true that we've got tan x is sine x divided by cos x, which is quite a quite a useful result. And again, as we look around the circle here, okay, uh, at zero, then tan is going to be zero. Something quite interesting happens to tan uh, at various points because at 90 degrees, say, we can't define and uh, we can't define tan because uh, it's sort of the gradient is when well, it's straight up, so it's almost like an infinite gradient, I suppose you might say. Uh, actually, we just say that tan is undefined at that point because we'd have to do, uh, say, we'd have to do tan 90 equals sine 90 over cos 90. You can hopefully remember that um, sine of 90 was 1, but cos of 90, you can again see it in the graph here, is 0. So actually, this is um, uh, undefined. So if we look at the graph of tan x, it's got this sort of slightly strange shape uh, where it uh, has these sort of asymptotes, we call them, at 90, at every, well, at 90 degrees, at 270 degrees, at 450 degrees. Essentially all those points uh, where the line on the unit circle would be vertical, where the gradient's undefined. Um, and one of the interesting things about the graph of tan is that it repeats every 180 degrees rather than every 360 degrees. Um, and if you think about that in terms of the gradient, well, uh, the gradient of this line here is going to be the same as the gradient of uh, this line of this down down here, which is 45 plus 180, which is you know, right all the way around that to 225 degrees, because um, all we've got is the same triangle here, but uh, with both negative values. So we've got, uh, if this is... Uh, y and this is x, and we've got minus y and minus x, while well, the gradient here, minus y divided by minus x, is just y divided by x, so tan of this value is the same as the same as tan of uh, tan of this value here, and we get that periodicity of uh, repeating every 180 degrees. So they're the graphs of sine, cos, and tan. Usually when we want a particular value of sine, cos, or tan, we would um, you know just reach for the calculator and, uh, and type it in, and it'll, and it'll give it to us. Uh, but it's important to to understand the symmetries to be able to solve problems and to and to know how these functions.